Hey everyone and welcome back. In the last few videos, we've been looking at ways to edit your photos non-destructively. We've covered using adjustment layers to add editable adjustments to your photos, layer masks which allows you to temporarily hide portions of your layers and if needed reveal them later on in your edit, and smart objects which preserves the pixels of the original layer allowing for seamless resizing up and down and allows you to add non-destructive filters. To finish off our series on non-destructive editing, let's take a look at how you can dodge and burn your photos while keeping the original photo intact. For those of you who haven't used the dodge or burn tools yet, they're primarily used in photo retouching to lighten or darken areas of your photo. Dodge to lighten and burn to darken. Let's first take a look at how they're traditionally used. Like your other tools, the dodge and burn tool can be found in your tools bar on the left. You'll also find the sponge tool grouped up with it as well, which controls saturation. When your tool of choice is selected, on the options bar at the top, you can choose which tones are targeted, shadows, midtones, or highlights, and how strong the brush is. A higher percentage will have a greater effect on the image, but may give you an unnatural result. It's usually better to keep the exposure low and use multiple brush strokes to gradually increase the lightness or darkness as needed. And if you're working on an image that contains human skin like this one, the Protect Tones option will help avoid any clipping or hue changes that would occur otherwise. Once your settings are in place, dodging and burning is as simple as brushing. You'll notice that as I brush over top of the skin, the area becomes darker and more defined. I can then switch over to the Dodge tool to brush over the areas that I want to brighten. Again, it's usually best to gradually work in the tones with a lower exposure. Now before we get too far in, that's the traditional way of dodging and burning your photos. The problem with this method is that you're directly editing the pixels of the photo, which is very difficult to reverse. Let me show you the non-destructive workaround to dodging and burning in Photoshop. Going back to the original image, our dodging and burning is going to take place on separate layers. So in the layers panel, go ahead and create a new layer. You can also quickly create new layers with a shortcut combination. On the Mac, it's Command, Shift, and N. On Windows, it's Control, Shift, and N. We'll be using this layer for burning, so I'm going to simply name it Burn. If you want to avoid that pop-up when creating a new layer, also include your Option or Alt key in the combination. Now that our layer has been created, we need to fill it with a neutral gray. A quick way to do this is to use the Fill command, which can be activated with the Shift, Delete, or Shift, Backspace shortcut. It can also be found under the Edit menu. Once the fill window is visible, set the contents to 50% gray and press OK. And finally, to allow the burning and dodging to pass through the layer onto our image, change the blend mode of the layer to overlay. Now we're ready to go. At this point, it's the exact same process as before. While you don't have to separate the burning and dodging on multiple layers, it's usually a safer bet, especially if you're trying to work as non-destructively as possible. Notice when I start to apply the brush strokes, the result is the same as it was when I burnt the original image, except this time all the burning is done on a separate layer, which means it can be turned on or off for comparison purposes, the opacity can be decreased to dampen the effect, or if you don't like it at all, it can be completely deleted. I'm going to now go ahead and create the second layer, which will be used for the dodging. Again, shift delete or shift backspace to bring up the fill window to fill it with a 50% gray and then set the blend mode to overlay. Now I can grab the dodge tool from the tools bar and begin to brighten up the areas that I feel should be a bit brighter. Of course, this probably wouldn't be exactly how I would retouch this model in a real world scenario, but it should give you an idea of how non-destructive burning and dodging can be achieved inside of Photoshop. Combine this trick with the other three non-destructive tools that we went over in this series, and you'll be on your way to much safer editing. I'll see you in the next video.